Um, do you know that uh, I've become I've I've like gotten into watching the the band that of course everybody knows Heim, yeah, and uh, Este the bass player. Uh, I've sort of become fascinated with her. They're all such charming musicians anyway right sure they have like an amazing thing they do yeah their yeah. whole their whole thing is just chemistry it's like just that they're sisters they it's amazing to watch interviews with them because they'll break into a song or a dance move with no cue and they all just will in sync as if it was like a choreographed thing but it'll be impromptu okay but the point of it is Estee's bass stank face Oh yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. when you see her in interviews, she's very ladylike, and she's of course they're all beautiful, and she's very you know uh, regal, I guess you could say. And when you watch her play bass, the bass stank face <laughs> is the most incredible. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, there's a band called Haim H A I M. Three sisters uh, have a band that have been around for a while, and they're wonderful, and they they're not just they're wonderful singers and songwriters, but they're also great instrumentalists. Like they're, they're wonderful with their instruments. They're all drummers and Este, one of the sisters, the oldest plays bass and she does the bass stank face. And that bass stank face is like that. that. <laughs> like she's a very pretty lady, but when she plays the bass, it's like, you know, like a, it's just the, the most grotesque features. Uh-huh. And it's funny because people have said like, Este, like what's the deal with your bass face? My friend says my friend calls it the bass stank, uh-huh. which I think is a musician term. Yeah, like I think that's uh-huh. been around for a while. But she's like, I don't even know what I'm doing. But it's oh, wow. funny to watch a, a, a lady that's a woman that's very regal and very beautiful. But then when the music comes on, it's it's making the most like grotesque yeah. faces you can, even in front of a crowd of fifty thousand people. It doesn't matter. I love the idea of like it's so intuitive. The <laughs> <laughs> the bass stank. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so that was, I don't know what got me started on the bass stank face, but we were in the car. No, where were we? Where we, we were, were, we were talking. Wasn't it in the car? Was it in the car? I or was it on the couch? Where we were. And it had to do no, with. we were out. It was in the car <laughs> because East and our youngest really wanted to watch Clockwork Orange. My, my, our youngest is a cinema guy. He loves movies. Like he's a big time, he watches a ton of movies and knows scenes and storylines and plots. He, he could watch one of those films where you watch him and then you're like, wait, what happened? He's like, oh, well, it's because the dad is the thing. And then that comes back, which is why they show the picture of the thing in the beginning. I'm like, oh yeah, right. Okay. So he's like into Kubrick and he really wants to watch Clockwork Orange. And I was like, you can't, that's one of them you can't watch. You, you can watch like. Full Metal Jacket, which has some gory scenes and a few scenes I had to fast forward through. But for the most part, it's just incredible dialogue and beautiful acting. And then, of course, 2001 he loved. But he really wants to watch Clockwork Orange. And I'm like, it's just it's just off limits right now at your age. And he's yeah. like, but why? I was like, he's well, 12. He's 12. So I was like, it's just got like stuff in it that's just not appropriate. So, of course, for... They push. They push hard. when you're. Tr- they won't take your... Uh... <clears throat> the nuance of like, you know, it's just inappropriate. And they go, oh, okay. They go, well, what? What exactly is it? And they're pushing, pushing, pushing because they want to get into it. He, especially him. Yeah. So he doesn't accept no for an answer very Not easily. Not at all. The, the idea of no is like saying, hey, I'm going to say no. And then I want you to argue about it for the next five hours. That's yes. what a no means. It's a to negotiation him. to him. I, I don't know anyone else like that when you say no or something can't be done. Nor, nor do I. Nor, nor do I. So we're in the car and he's like, I really want to watch Clockwork Orange. And I'm like, it's just not appropriate. And he's like, well, it, it, it's, I mean, like what, what's not appropriate? What's not appropriate? And he, and I'm like, well, and I'm trying not to say things which make it so tantalizing and titillating the forbidden, the forbidden fruit where it's like he Googles this on his own. Uh-huh. So I'm like, uh, it's just some stuff that's like, I'm trying to like be very low key about it. I was like, I don't know. It's like, it's got some you know, some stuff that's inappropriate. He's like, well, what exactly? He's like, okay, well, there's like, I think I said no like five times and he's He's like, violence? I've seen it. I don't care. Violence doesn't bother me. I was like, it's not violence. He's like, what? What, like sex stuff? It's like, yeah, kind of in that category. And he's like, well, 
I mean, I know what that stuff is. I was like, yeah, I know, but you don't need to see it on, on a video. He's never... Especially a Clockwork Orange version of it, which is a very um, avant-garde version of it's, it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fast, it's a threesome in fast forward. That's what it is. It's a threesome. It's kind of entertaining. And they do it though. in fast forward with <laughs> classical music. It's artsy, but he doesn't, no 12 year old needs to see that. He right. Can, he can see the great stuff with the costumes and the fight sequences. Yeah. And then there's a rape scene. I forgot about that. So I, I, I remembered these scenes in my head as he wanted to see. I was like, mm-hmm. well, it's like some, it shows some girls' bodies. And, and so, okay, so let me see how this came about. Because it was, <laughs> I think it may have been the most inappropriate thing my wife has ever said in our 31 years together. So I said, well, I just don't think it's appropriate, son, at your age to see like, 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 Oh, that's the wording. I think like, you said a pretty woman's body. Like a pretty woman's body naked. Like it's just, it's not something you need to see at this point in your life. And there's like a pause and I'm driving and were you in the back seat? Yeah. And you're in the back seat with Easton? Yeah. And I was in the front with Story. Yeah. So I said, I just don't think you need to see a pretty woman's body naked at this stage of your life. And there's a long pause and Jenna said... I mean, you see my pretty naked body every day. Really? What's the big deal? Because I shower. They come in and they go, hey, can we um, go play basketball? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Go ahead. And it's a very normal, innocuous comment until you think about what it is. And there was this long pause. As a mother, I thought nothing of it. Though I was supporting your purpose. Like, I don't want him watching that either. I was more just commenting on the one concept that was floating about, not connected to the movie. I kind of felt like you had made the comment, like, forgetting that, like, you were, like, to me, like, you were like, you see a pretty woman's naked no, body every day. No, to the kids. I know who you said it to, uh, but you kind of forgot that. <laughs> like, it was like... Well, to me, no, I was literally right. on, like, I'm changing, getting ready in the bathroom all the time the door's open we're an open door showering family so there's a little bit of a pause and all of a sudden like the two boys looked at each other (laughs) and it was one of the most horrific moments where they realized what she was saying and then (laughs) jenna kind of like went outside of her body and was like what did i just say and then it was bad context and then jenna went into a hysterical glee where she couldn't believe what she had just said and then she started laughing, you know, the, the the kind of laughter where it's like... It's 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 just like you sound like a hyena because you can't catch your breath. Yeah, and the kids were like, Mom, Mom, what the hell? What the hell? And it was, it was such a great moment because in our marriage, I'm the one that always says the stupid, inappropriate comment. Always. Always, without a doubt, Jenna is definitely the more classical... <laughs> it's not even the right word. You're just the one that doesn't put their foot in their mouth. I do. But that was one of the more horrific comments. And when Easton sort of realized, like, Mom. <laughs> and then you were like, what? <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> I took something that wasn't awkward, which is just how right. we are as a family. Right. And it suddenly, because of the context of the situation of like what we don't want him to see on Clockwork Orange, yeah. I thrust myself yeah. into that category conceptually yeah. for my children. Yeah. And I took it from showering to like women doing orgies in a movie and I suddenly now was in the same box. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah, that was so it bad. It was awful. That was, that was like a parenting... Sl- like a parenting... Parenting sh- fail. Oh my God. But it, but it was made in such a sweet... Uh, Simple statement of like, yeah, they, they do see a hot woman's naked body all the time. Just happens to be my wife and their mom. <laughs> that was really weird. Yeah, it was a great moment. But you didn't get mad at me. We didn't no. argue or anything No, I like was laughing. We were too busy laughing about it. Yeah. And the truth is, is we're kind of a, a pretty playful family. So the kids kind of laughed it off too. I think in some families, if that stuff is very serious they get serious because we're pretty laughable with shit like that they honestly laugh it off and you could see on them that they were done with it it was the silence right after i said it that was classic they they suddenly framed i framed myself they were and it all of a sudden i became framed for them within this like sexual concept they they were like wait what hot pretty girls naked bodies do we see every day and they were like Oh, you mean you. <laughs> oh, mom. <laughs> it was really, really bad. It, it was it was really bad. You can see that after the laughter, it was fine because yeah. 
Like there are things they processed that, it out through the laughter. Yeah, and that there's things that they don't process out. Like for them, that kind of thing, laughter about nakedness and that kind of stuff is not really a big deal for them. What makes our sons go over the edge, like where it's like trauma, is embarrassment. Like when I or Jenna does something that embarrasses them in public. Like that that causes them where I, you can see them go into a dark place. Like like <laughs> Okay, we each have our own things. I'll often do things inappropriate, which embarrass them in public. Jenna will do like a lecture, like a life lecture in public, which sends our boys to another level. Like, and for Jenna, it's just like being a mom. Like, listen, it's a life children. lesson. Yeah, like a life lesson in a mall where she's like giving them a life lesson, and you can see their eyes start to dart around. Of like, oh my god, who's listening to this life lesson? And they're like, and one of them, one of them goes deeper than the other one where they're like mom mom like almost teary like mom please stop right now and it's not like jenna's on like a soapbox with a megaphone she's just being like it's very important to like whatever the life lesson is but that it's in a public place our kids go batshit that you can see scars them yeah it's a real and for me it's like feels like the most aligned to the purpose of being a mother so i feel so um in my zone when it's happening. Yeah. And so it's in direct conflict. Like I'm creating a nightmare for them, which is yeah. the opposite of what a mother wants to do by being what I think is in the pocket as a right. mother. Okay. Totally. And the same, I do the same thing when someone's acting like a bully in public, like a, an aggressive driver or a road rager. And I'm like wanting to step up and like stop someone from creating like, a, like possibly harming or bullying someone. And I'm like a dad and I'm like, I want to protect my kids and other kids and other parents in the vicinity. And I'll be like, hey, hey, buddy, like something like if someone's like an asshole in the car, I'll be like, hey, buddy, you want to like knock that? Our kids will be like, ah, ah, like they want to die. And I'm like, I'm just telling that guy, like, let the old lady cross the street. Don't drive forward like you're going to hit the old lady. That's fucked up. And I want to make that guy knock off his behavior. And our kids are like. <laughs> like they want to like, like no. <laughs> They're like, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't, dad, 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 dad. Story, our oldest has a thing where if someone like does like a horrible road rage, we we live in Austin, Texas now. There is absolutely, and I'm gonna get into my son's story, <clears throat> a drive up your ass mentality, where where with large pickup trucks, lar- guys with large pickup trucks drive up your straight ass. up your asshole. And just Even ride. when you're going 10 miles an hour past the speed limit. Doesn't matter. Or 20 miles an hour past the speed limit. They're crawling up your ass. Up your asshole in their large F- F-150. F-150s. And they're like, you're on the freeway and they're like fucking 10 feet behind you. Like, Rrr! and I'm like, yeah, that's fucking dangerous. If I have to stop for something in the road, you're going to fucking careen over me. So I'll want to like, I'll get over and I'll want to give the guy a honk or look and my our Yeah, oldest, probably not in this state. You don't? Probably not. But our <laughs> oldest, I if, if I even have to like do a honk, our oldest is like, don't honk, don't honk, don't honk. He'll say it. Don't honk, don't honk, don't honk. And so I had a I had a honk discussion with Story recently where I was like, listen, let me tell you about honking. There is a tap honk, which is a polite way of saying, please move or go ahead. You know, like at a red light when no one goes, you could do a tap honk. And Story, our oldest is like, honking is rude and it is aggressive. Don't do it. And I was like, Look, it. it's like the, it's a very slight thing. It's going to take you years to figure out that's exact timing. But when you get it, you get it. A tap is just like a, excuse me, pardon me, heads up. And then there's like a, huh, which is like a little more. And then there's the, huh, which is the asshole, which I never do. But there is a tap or a slightly more than a tap, which is degrees of politeness. Yeah. Degrees of, hey, hey, wake up. Yeah. Our oldest is like any, any tapping on the horn is basically tantamount to like let's get out of the car and beat the shit out of each other Uh uh-huh and he hates it yeah he fucking hates it he is a sweetie he doesn't like it and i had to tell him like listen you gotta like listen in on the on the horn tap like there's like a way to go like where it's like yeah i think that'd be the only one that's acceptable to him if it goes on too long like if someone's on their phone and the light turns green i don't honk right away i give them a second to figure it out for themselves but then if it's like too many seconds go by where they're not figuring it out i'll just do a very gentle tap because we all look at our phone. Absolutely. And, and he's he's like okay with that if it's like a long... But he always asks, why did you honk? Right. 
Why did you do that? <clears throat> Some of them were taking too long because they didn't realize the light turned and they're looking at their phone and whatever. But it always has to go through the committee <laughs> of approval of like, was that a legitimate tap or were you being an asshole? Mom? That's the area of our kids' biggest button is things that embarrass them that they they, they think we're doing something that's like a scene. Yeah, yeah. It's it us doing a tap and a horn is the equivalent of like you and I get into a, like a fist fight in a mall. Totally. Yes. <laughs> like a drunken fist it's fight. The same where it ends of up with us tearing each other's clothes off and and it, and like getting torn off by the police. That's the same in their mind is like us going hey, on a horn. Yeah. There is also in Texas this fine state <laughs> in this in this fine city of Austin. <clears throat> not just the the guys driving behind you with their F one fifties driving up your ass. There's also the aggressive red light tapper like. You're at the left turn. You're at the the left turn signal, and it turns green, and you're just barely getting your foot off the brake to go to the gas. And I was like, ha! and I'm like, like I, buddy, it's like a hundredth of a second. Uh, what the fuck in Texas? I haven't gotten that one. Oh my god! It now, in in their defense, I realize that I am the slowest. I have become the slowest driver. Yeah, I've said this before. Yeah, you're the you're a contented kind of. Just enjoying driving your car. I am. I have. You're not in a rush, except if you're behind someone who's taking too long, then you'll honk. Then you're in a rush. But Mm -hmm. when you're on the freeway, you drive really slow. I think a man, as he gets older, goes in two directions. He goes in 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 the car in regards to Uh car. uh He goes aggro guy. That's like get out of the way, do this, and he's just fucking up, aggro aggravating people. Or he's Sunday driver, arm out the window. I got nowhere fucking to be, even when I do. And, I, and I'm that guy. I'm like, I got kids in the car. I don't really need to fucking rush. I'm not going to drive dangerously. And I'm just going to fucking take my time. It's gorgeous here in Austin. Beautiful day. We'll get where we're going. And I'm, I've become that driver. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because I get honked at a lot. Except you honk if you're behind a red light and you want someone to go. You, you do get... Um... I, I don't agree with you on this particular point. Oh, I, I okay. don't feel like I honk a lot here. I feel like I'm more of the getting honked at. Maybe it's not honking. Maybe it's just, come on, come on, come on. You know, there's chatter. Yeah. You and I have chatter to... Chatter about the person being slow or what they're doing. You and I have to... You and I have to do something about our car driving. You know, it's really the only fights we get in now are, are car driving fights. I, I've decided to shut my mouth. Well, here's the thing. But what do you mean by shut your mouth? Exactly. Well, okay... Be specific. There is an outdoor mall called The Domain here in Austin. It's in north, more northern Austin. And there is something that occurs when Bodhi is driving and trying to either find parking or navigate through the domain. Because it's a whole outdoor mall thing. So it's a lot of little streets, a lot of stop signs, a lot of pedestrian traffic. And some one-way streets and one-way things sometimes. Anyhow. Um... You trying to navigate that whole situation from parking to exiting to entering, you have a a bit of a dance you encounter when you do it. And I try to help you, but it doesn't go well. Well, I so I did you notice yesterday when we were there? Yeah, so trying to park, I said there's a spot right there. We got into a kerfuffle (laughs) and the day before, correct. So I went (laughs) on the exit yesterday, I kept my mouth shut, okay. And remember, you're like driving in back alleys. You're you you, and I'm not sure if it's like you think that you have a clever exit. There's like in your mind, you're not just going to do the traditional route out. You have to find the clever way out. But it always ends up in like a one way back alley, running into a dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> that you then have to do an awkward nineteen point turn to get out. And you know, then, I'm like, laughing. I don't know, right? so I'm just gonna stay out of it. So I just kept my mouth shut and let you figure it out. I'm laughing right now, but I'm on the verge of divorce. Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> because, because it is truly upsetting when I'm just doing my own thing and you. F- I'm kidding about, it. but I mean that that you feel the need to like when I like you'll say park in that spot right there. There's three. There's a spot three, and I'm like. Just let me do it. I got it under control. And you're like, but just pull up. And I'm like, just let me do it. I can't understand why you can't just let me be the driver. Okay. So just let's let me reverse the... things a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's do so. So when I'm driving. You drive. How often are you pointing on how I should do? There's a spot there. There's a spot there. All I never. All I ask you to do while driving is to slow down. You drive fast and you scare me every, t- every time I drive with you. Yeah, I, can't, I don't drive fast anymore at all. You are a fast driver and you brake late. 
and and there are people. There are people. I break friends light. of ours. I break late. I there never are used friends to of be ours that, att- that attest that you are a late breaker. Meaning, do you get what I mean? Like she goes to the last second and, and then stops. Like she's comfortable with do knowing you she's going to break. Into friends attesting about things about each other. Because I could pull out a file, but I'm gonna go for it. No, I'm not gonna. Okay. But you, It'd be better if I had the committee here. You we did an intervention. You break late, and you always make me go, oh, and so, and then she breaks, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! Like I didn't, I don't know what her foot is doing. Because like, you have no faith in trust in me. Oh well, it is. The, I do have faith because in our 31 years together, I don't think I've ever been in an accident with you that was your fault ever. You've never been in an accident with me ever. I think we were in an accident once on never. Los Feliz Boulevard, but it was not your fault. Yeah. No, you story weren't in the, was in the car. Back. You weren't in the car. It was me and Story by ourselves. There was one we were together in. No. Have I never been in an accident with you? No, never. In our 31 years together of driving all through Hollywood, of our years of driving together, never. that's kind of amazing. Yeah. Never. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just realizing that's kind of a cool... Boy, I want to knock on wood for that one. That's marble, but that's okay. No, the end is wood. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay. <laughs> Do you want to knock on wood? Anyhow. <laughs> wow. But the driving, we do have a rule about who's who's in control. Yeah. And I think when we just honor it, we do better. Yes, but you won't. <laughs> I did on the way out of the domain yesterday. You, when I got locked behind a dump truck in a back alley? I, sh- I said nothing. That was after our kerfuffle. Of course you right, said nothing. Right, so I decided to say nothing. Because I was like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to help him get out. I'm not going to point which way is out. I'm just going to let him get out. He survives just fine without me when he's out doing errands. I'm going to shut my mouth and I'm going to sit here in the back seat like a subdued little lady. Do other couples have the thing where if I get her in a position where it's slightly scary, like a left turn and there's a car coming, the sound she makes is upset, like... I made a left turn in front of someone that kind of... Exiting the domain four days ago. Yeah. Again, on a, if this was on one of the things where he wasn't listening to me co-pilot. Because I was in control and I made a left turn a little aggressively. No one had to shut put on their brakes, but it was a little aggressive. And okay. the, the sound she made was the sound you make like when you see like a family member be like they're slaughtered. Like it was like... <gasps> I did not. I was yeah. going, honey, 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 honey. But you said it in the most shrill way you can imagine, and okay. it scared the fuck out of me. You don't okay. look like you're having fun with any of this. <laughs> what are you talking about? I was just saying you 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 turned directly into oncoming tra- a person who was driving towards us because you were in a protest. Yeah. About not letting me co-pilot. Well, I thought I could get away. I thought I could get out properly. That's what I'm saying. You I, have your ways that you think you can get out, and yeah. you don't listen to the. Because I thought I had the job of co-pilot. Why did you think that? Because you asked me how to get out of there. You're like, do I turn right here? Do I turn left here? So I was telling you where to go. Oh, right. That, that was what we got into the fight about. That You're was... right. I asked you how to get out. And then once I knew how to get out, then I was done with you as co-pilot. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know you just written me off in your head and just cut ties well, now, with well, me Well, there's now the exit. Job. Now there's the exit. Well, no, it was the wrong way and then you decided to pull it. Well, but it was the wrong way right but I knew how to get it. None of you guys are following this. The point <laughs> is is that, is that I'm driving the car. Yeah. I'm driving the car. You're the big boy. I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> like a big boy, be a big boy. <laughs> like a big boy. You don't need help from the lady. No. I no, ladies it. don't know shit. No. Ladies fuck it all up. No. They don't know what they're doing. No. Turn right here. Turn left. They're dum-dums. <laughs> no. I know what to do. I'm going to turn right into oncoming traffic to make my wife wrong. Scare the fuck out of her. Oncoming traffic. It was. They were driving straight at us. One car in a park in a parking lot. It wasn't a parking lot. Well, it was the road of the domain and she yes, was driving up the street. She was just pulling from a stoplight. She had just come from a stop sign. She was just barely moving, and you, I pulled and left in front of her. Okay, that, you can perceive it your way. That's okay. <laughs> so this is really where the marriage is at, is that we are having an incredible time in our life <laughs> in the twilight of our 31 years together, but with our driving is just fucking skitzy. Like, it's just, we, we can't... We really used to honor the who's in control. Whoever is driving... Has control, and, yeah. and we really do best when we just whoever's not driving shuts their mouth. I would be more than happy to agree to that, but uh-huh. I don't feel that you will keep to it. Again, no faith. 
Well, it isn't that it's no faith. It's that I think... But I also don't think you'll keep to... What don't you think I'll do? What Telling what? me where I should turn and where I should park. You could turn oh. here. Turn here. Oh, I oh, there's see. a spot. There's a spot. Why don't you just park here? Here, here go here first because... <laughs> why, do I, why do I get on the replay of me the double statement? Turn here. Turn here. You Oh, because you do. Is that what I do? I do a double... Like yeah. a the double statement? Yeah, it's like the kids <laughs> when they're gaming. Oh, the game... Yes. Our kids, when they game, everything is... Is doubles. Doubles, and then they take it into life. Yeah. Mama, mama, look at this, look at this. Yeah, because they'll be with their come friends here, here. game, and they're like, listen, listen. go left, go left, turn there, turn there. And then they come to the dinner table, and they're like, pass me the ketchup, pass me the ketchup. <laughs> more salt, more salt, more salt, more salt, more salt, more salt. No chicken, no chicken. It sounds like we have rain men for sons, but we don't. <laughs> no, it's just they get, they get a little double statement as if they're gaming with their friends. Yeah, yeah. It used to be worse when they were younger. Now they have a little bit more like yeah. computing capacity as teenagers, yeah. so they don't do it quite so much. But you still do it. The double statement. Yeah. If, if here, I could, here, here, here. Yeah, I do that. Thank you. I well, I admit that I I definitely do double statement, and when I'm yeah, I I will admit to that. And I and so I, all I wanted out of the podcast was one admission. <laughs> all right. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, so just to, before we end off today, do you, does, I don't know if you all know that Jenna and I are officially TikTok stars now. <laughs> it gives me the most perverse pleasure, the most perverse pleasure that all these twiddly twits on TikTok with their ridiculous videos on this or that that are blowing up and how important they feel because they they can show you how to trim their nails properly and so they're a TikTok star. Um, that we we have now outperformed them because kicking and screaming is now on TikTok. It's kicking and screaming. It's at kicking Elfman. It's at kicking Elfman on TikTok. Yeah, and uh, we've blown up. We're 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 so we're bigger than the tweens now, <sighs> and they're gonna have to get used. <sighs> To their platform being inundated by by my old ass having viral videos, uh, and I like that that I've taken over their their uh, social media their platform. arena. Uh-huh. You ventured in on your big. Oh, course. I love it. You, you know how the how the younger generation got really furious a few years ago because Facebook was all old people. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That makes yeah, me really I happy. Shouldn't. Like that, that none of the younger people go to Facebook anymore. So now I want TikTok. Uh-huh. I want to take TikTok TikTok back. From the twits. Yes. The, the tween twits. Yes. And I want to make it just full of people like us having fun and making others laugh. And so you guys can find us on TikTok. We're there. We do videos. And there's a lot of a lot of old kicking and screaming files and footage there. You can yeah. find us there. A lot of clips. A lot of fun clips. Yep. And um, that's it. We'll see you guys soon. We'll just keep the podcast coming and coming. We're on YouTube. We're on TikTok. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, and I and we're on Twitter, and I just hate Twitter. God, I hate Twitter. Yeah, I don't really go on it so much anymore. I, don't, I hate Twitter. Do you guys hate? Do you guys wish that Twitter would just go away? I guess we should go away. I'd be okay if it just got deleted. <laughs> Can we delete Twitter? If I was Elon Musk, I would buy Twitter and then delete it. Yeah, yeah, delete it from the. Literally, be like, yeah, I, I bought it, and then I deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I would do is uh, if I had $44 billion. Yeah, it's tempting. I'd buy TikTok and I'd fucking delete it. But I'd still own the copyright. So I'd be like, eh, it's still around. It's <laughs> just delete it. If Bodie Elfman were in power. I would buy TikTok and then delete it. Uh-huh. And then all the kids would be like, <laughs> they'd be like, wait, what's that, that bright orb in the sky? <laughs> <laughs> Like, All what's right. that green thing blowing in the wind? Oh my god. What? <laughs> what? 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 It's bright outside. Okay. Love you. <laughs> <laughs>